the heart problem, just maybe I should just first summarize what the heart problem is. It basically says that um, there is nothing about um, mass, charge, momentum, spin, nothing about any material property, nothing about any physical quantity in terms of which we could deduce, at least in principle, the qualities of experience. Uh, there is, uh, people used to call it, uh, early, before the hard problem became fashion, people used to call it the explanatory gap. Uh, there is a huge explanatory abyss between predicting how matter will behave, but trying to deduce the qualities of experience from the physical quantities. It is impossible even in principle. And that's a very vexing question. My perspective on that is that um, it is not a problem at all. It's not a real problem that needs to be solved. It's not a problem that exists out there at all. It's an artifact of bad thinking. Bad thinking that happened long ago became so internalized that it goes unexamined. And now we take it for granted because it has been around for so long. It gathered so much momentum that we don't see through it. And um, the, the bad step of thought was to replace reality with a description of reality, to replace the territory with the map. And the hard problem basically says, well, we cannot deduce the territory from the map. Well, guess what? Of course not, because the map is a description of the territory. The territory comes first, mind comes first, qualities come first. Quantities are a way to describe qualities, the relative differences between qualities. So of course we cannot deduce the qualities from those quantities because they are the description in the first place, not, not the thing from which qualities arise. So th that inversion is what has led to the hard problem. It's not a problem, it's an artifact of metaphysical materialism. I think once you see through that, the problem just disappears, it doesn't need to be solved. I feel like it's even more than an artifact of materialism, it's an artifact of a kind of implicit dualism. You're kind of saying that matter is, is some kind of substance that I, I think I know what it is. Mind is another kind of substance that I, I think I know what it is. And there's some mapping that needs to take place between the two, which I just think fundamentally isn't the right way of thinking about it. And the way to talk about consciousness, in my opinion, would just be to use the same mapping process, you know, when you map out phenomenology, uh, and not try to um, explain it away, but you just you stick with what science does, which is offer descriptions of processes and, um, and not try to go any deeper than that. Um, beyond that, I think what you just said, uh, you've pinned down a, a very, very common and very, very problematic thing that happens, uh, which is this implicit dualism you're talking about. This catches people uh, uh, wrong-footed all the time and they don't even know what they're doing. Uh, I can give you an example. Um, when I'm having debates and I say, well, everything is mental. I'm not saying that everything is in your mind alone or in my mind alone. I'm saying that the world out there is constituted of transpersonal mental states, experiential states. That is what, that's what it is in and of itself. And it presents itself to us on this screen of perception as colors, uh, uh, flavors, and so on. And then people say, well, but that cannot be the case. Well, that cannot be right. Because, you know, matter influences mentality and the direction of causality is very clear. If a surgeon goes with a material scalpel and cuts into your brain, something will happen in your conscious inner life. So how can idealism explain that? Because matter is influencing or determining the states of mind. So it cannot be all mind. So you see, that's the inconsistency of, inconsistency of thought. That's the dualism raising its ugly head uh, uh, when you're not looking. If I'm saying that everything is mental, then that scalpel is also the image of a mental process. And that one mental process affects another mental process is trivial. Our thoughts impact our emotions and our emotions impact our thoughts every day. So my position entails that when a surgeon holding a scalpel cuts into your brain or when you drink alcohol, that material liquid, a physical liquid, um, they influence your conscious inner life because they too are mental processes which simply present themselves to your uh, uh, observation as the scalpel, as the alcohol. That's how they appear to you. 
but in and of themselves, they too are mental processes. And then of course they influence your conscious inner life because mental processes of different natures influence one another. 